Somebody said that, that um, singing is praying twice. Some people think it was Chairman Mao. Some people think it was John Wesley. Some people think it was John the Twenty Third. I don't know. Um, but in a way, it is praying twice because one of the things that music does is to give sense to words. You know, if we were to sing, uh, if we were to say some words, they would never have the same depth of, of importance of, or significance as when we sing them. Um, let me take an example. Is there anybody here has a birthday this week? We're not asking for ages, just a name. Anybody having a birthday? Okay, your first name is? Kelly. Kelly, okay. Kelly, I can look at you and say, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Kelly. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> or I could go, dear, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Kelly, happy birthday to you. Now, which one did you prefer? <laughs> the music is doing is adding something to the words that they don't have themselves. So when we sing in church, particularly if we're singing a text which is offered to God, which is a, a request of God or which is a statement of praise to God, then when we offer it, the music embellishes it with a much more profound meaning. Amen, alleluia, amen, 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 alleluia, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Sometimes I ask people to hum, and I ask people to hum because when you hum, you hear two things. You hear your internal voice and you hear the external voice. And it means that if, you know, if I sing one verse on my own and I ask people to hum the second verse, then people begin to self-correct. They hear what the tune should be and they hear if they don't approximate to it so that when they join the song, they're able to, to sing it. And it's, you know, I don't do this with everything, but with some songs, it saves a long time teaching at the, at the beginning of, of the liturgy. And, and, and although it seems an odd thing to say when you hum verse 2, if it gets people engaged and if it gets people learning, it's worthwhile. Here's a song called The Family. It's a song about the life of Jesus, which is not, by and large, mentioned um, in many uh, books. We have plenty of songs of the birth, plenty of songs of the death, but not many about his actual ministry. And every, every verse here is based on uh, the Gospels. And what I'm going to do is to sing verse 1. You hum verse 2, come and sing verse 3. He had no wife, no family. He had no children of his own. He once had been a refugee. Despised but never left alone To all the widowed and the fatherless He showed the love that none had shown Hum He liked to watch as children played And knew the lyrics of their song he cared for those who lived at risk, the ones whose rights had all gone wrong, the plight of helpless and of homeless folk, who'd always in his heart belong. We sing. He had no joy. To pay the rent, but women gave him 
came our son They saw in him no single thread. His singleness was safe and good. To a globe in which the developing uh, world is seeing a great increase in participation in liturgy, membership of church discipleship, particularly in China. And if we're part of that international church, there should be badges, signs in our liturgy that we belong there. I think for much of my life I imagined that the only songs that the Southern Hemisphere had produced, in fact, the only one that the Southern Hemisphere had produced was Kumbaya. We sang it all the time. Desmond Tutu came from South Africa, we sang Kumbaya in Glasgow. Um, Bishop Ting came from China, St. Mary's Cathedral, we sang Kumbaya. Uh, Archbishop Helder Camera came from Recife in Brazil, we sang Kumbaya. I met a man last year who'd been to Kumbaya. He says, it's a mountain village in Venezuela and nobody knows the tune. <laughs> but there's much more. Although my fingers might not manage it, I'd like to do uh, a great psalm which has just come uh, from William Ramirez, who's my Salvadorian friend. I am glad, I am glad to be present in the house of God. I am glad, I am glad to be welcomed by the living Lord. And I believe in the church because on my own I cannot feed the hungry or clothe the naked or evangelize the doubting or celebrate the mysteries of faith. Because Christianity is about commitment to discipleship, as well as the comprehension of God's will and purposes, I cannot go it alone. At a time as this, we are called to commitment. For such a time as this, we are called to God's service. Sometimes to listen, sometimes to weep, sometimes to wait or to speak. All to be caring, all to have, for such a time as this.